This moment here is where everything he's done, everything to that point doesn't mean anything. Uh, his world's about to change, everyone's world's about to change. Everything shifts, the whole tone of the book just takes this kind of 180 degree flip and all of a sudden there's quiet, tears, fear, anxiety, stress, worry. Everything random changes and the outcome will be the world he has to survive. He has no control whatsoever. Everything kicks off to Shitsville. The moment, 2 a.m. I'm doing it. I'm gonna write the words down and it's probably the most predictable quote from any eyewitness to an epic event. It was like a scene out of a Hollywood movie. Sometimes I reckon on the ground news crews aren't allowed to go back to the office until they've recorded it. So I feel so dirty for saying it, but the thing is I can't think of any other way to explain what I witnessed. It was epic. In fact, I think I'm going to retire the word epic from my vocabulary now. No future event will ever come close to what just happened. Nothing else will ever be truly epic. The countdown reached zero. There was confusion on the broadcast as they were following the comet's entry with the satellite camera, and when it hit the atmosphere there was an almighty flash of light somewhere above the Indian Ocean. The flare blinded the lens for a few seconds, but we hadn't been pulverised into the Earth's core. We were alive. Everyone cheered and I bellowed so hard, tears came to my eyes. I was a freaking live. The commentators were fumbling to relay some meaningful information. Mr. Jamison was telling everyone to shut up while he turned the TV up to maximum volume. But then the night sky lit up bright as day. A ball of glowing fire appeared to our right. It came in from the northwest and just kind of floated past us, right over the city, headed southwest. It looked impossible in so many ways. Night became day. This heavy rock just hanging in the sky. It was spinning end over end with a large jigged edge sticking out. It must have been ripping past at incredible speed, but everything seemed so slow motion. It almost looked peaceful, gentle, but it was here to bring chaos and pain. For so many reasons, it was impossible. No one spoke. Everyone just stared in silence at the rock and the vapour trail until it disappeared out of sight high over the hills. The whole thing couldn't have lasted more than five to ten seconds. I think I snapped a few decent pics on my phone, but I wasn't aiming, just firing blind. A few seconds later, an explosion ripped through the Adelaide plains below, then another. I looked out to see two big plumes of debris billowing into the night air. One down near the airport and the other somewhere between Flinders Medical Centre and Marion Shopping Centre. Someone reckoned it was Mitchell Park. Then another small rock went sizzling over our heads, very low and very quick. Surely that impacted into the Adelaide Hills somewhere. Shit got real at that moment. Things had gone from a news story to an event, to a light show and now a catastrophe. Under those dust clouds, there were probably many people dead. There was panic and whimpering and cuddles and I love yous and nervous breathing and swearing, lots of swearing. Then things went quiet. Everything and everyone except the TV broadcast on the balcony went quiet. I realised all eyes were glued to the screen. The TV guy said something like, it seems as if the bulk of the comet has struck the southernmost reaches of the Bay of Bengal. Hopefully, those in low-lying areas of India, Southeast Asia, Africa, and most importantly for us, the West Australian coast, get to higher ground as a matter of urgency, if they haven't already done so because of the threat of tsunami. We're getting reports of large fragments of debris breaking off from the comet. Reports are sketchy at the moment, but it looks like Australia is in the firing line of some of these smaller fragments. We are hoping and praying for the safety of all Australians and we'll be keeping you up to date with everything as it unfolds. I couldn't help but think, that was a smaller fragment? How big did the actual thing look when it impacted the Indian Ocean? And the damage? What on earth is to come? There wasn't much talking for the next few minutes, just watching for updates on the TV. 
They seemed painfully slow, but it was difficult, I suppose. Any eyewitnesses to the event were probably fried by the blast impact, or killed by tsunamis, or poisoned by toxins or some such thing. And the camera in space really only showed a mass of blinding light. Then we started hearing reports about Melbourne. That the massive rock that bulked past us had landed near there, real close. No one was hearing anything from any Melbourne media outlet. Signals had died. And the potential for bad news was high. Just the thought of Australia's second largest city getting hit was scary. That's when things got really frickin' real. That's when some guests start wailing. Some were consoling each other, kids clinging onto their parents for dear life. Others just stood or sat in stunned silence. Some started manically working their phones, presumably trying to contact people in Melbs. I don't think they had much luck. The phones were all but dead most of the night. Some, like me, just watched the TV. The Melbourne angle was getting some weight behind it. We started hearing some reports about a more specific impact site near Frankston on the Mornington Peninsula. I'm pretty sure that's an outer suburb of Melbourne, and if it was the rock we saw floating through the sky earlier, then Melbourne looks like it's pretty much screwed. Wow, Melbourne. MCG Melbourne, footy Melbourne. Wow. It's hard to recall exact times between events on the night, but it was several minutes before the shock waves hit. Could have been seven, could have been 15, I'm just not sure. But when it hit, it hit. There was like this subtle breeze hitting from the Adelaide Plains all night, but it started getting stronger and fast. When standing upright became a noticeable challenge, that's when the noise began. It started building beyond the hills behind us, louder and louder, seriously loud, then louder again, jet engine loud. Then an explosion of wind and debris and rocks and trees came barreling over the lip of the hills. This shockwave, presumably from the Melbourne impact, turned into a cocktail of lethal floating objects that just hit the top of Mount Lofty and kept going up and out. It launched objects high in the sky above us, further propelled by the vicious sea breeze that had swept off the plains. I've got a feeling we got very lucky here. No debris seemed to rain down on us. It pushed over our heads onto the plains below. It was kind of like we were standing at the peak of a giant breaking wind wave. Breaking wind wave. That's a bit awkward. Like we were in an air pipeline or something, just in the perfect part of the barrel that held its shape long enough to protect our asses. It was surreal. The wind hitting us from city side was strong but tolerable while overhead this crazy blast of energy pushed all sorts of objects well over our heads and onto the city below. I saw a couple of cars go overhead and that was enough for me to head inside. I pushed my face up to the lounge room window and continued watching. I kept an eye on my house as I had a distant view of it from the Jamisons. It seemed okay for now. The shockwave probably unloaded for a few minutes but it slowly subsided after the initial front. The TVs had gone dead, just showing static. But as the winds calmed, panic set in. Mr. Jamison called for everyone to calm down and he started getting everyone involved in making a plan of action. It was short-lived though. As soon as he got everyone in a more positive frame of mind, there was another big explosion outside. It was distant, but large. The house shook with its force. Again, attention turned to the view of the city below. A huge fireball leapt out from the parkside area. Then, as everyone was trying to work out what could have caused it, a fiery ball rock or something about the size of a truck came into view from over the hills and buried itself beyond the city in the western suburbs. Then another one from the same direction hit Salisbury way out in the north. A smaller fireball, not sure what to call those things, landed a couple of suburbs away to our left. It took a couple of houses before something exploded, presumably a gas line or something. There were more fireballs that could be seen off in the distance. I figured all this was emanating from the Melbourne impact, which didn't bode well for anyone closer than us, 800 kilometers. I got distracted so much by the light show and taking a few pics, I nearly missed the really bad news. Someone pointed out the sea was receding, fast. With the conditions that night, the water just looked like a black slick, with the moonlight dancing off the distant waves, 
now all partly obscured by the dust of the shockwave, I hardly noticed, until there was no moonlight glimmering at all. The water drew out of the area fast, real fast. That could only mean one thing, tsunami.